Thank you. All right. Oh, I might need to move this up a bit. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Great. All right. I know you've done this a lot of times today, but I also want to know who's in the room and who I'm speaking to. So can I get a show of hands for designers and developers? Uh, business owners or like DIY WordPressers? Any agency owners or people who run a team of devs? Okay, cool. I hope you all get something out of this talk. I know the title does make it sound like it's very techy, um, but I do think that the overall message that I want to share today is something that everybody can get something from. And at the end, I will share exactly what I think each group uh, can learn from my experience on this project. So uh, basically what I want to talk to you today about is this JavaScript app that we built and embedded in WordPress. So the how and why of that. I'll go over our technical challenges and how we solved them and why I think this hybrid approach is something that might be useful for you. If you don't know what I mean by hybrid, basically we went halfway to headless, if I can call it that. Uh, there's been other talks this weekend about the whole headless thing and the Gatsby thing, so I won't go into all of that. Uh, our project, though, basically was a mix of both worlds. I did this with my partner Hamish. He was our lead developer. He came to this project with a strong background in C-sharp programming and in JavaScript, but no experience whatsoever with WordPress or even PHP. And I came uh, taking the role of sort of front-end design and project lead, so I uh, negotiated with the client on the requirements and managed the project. So why did we do this? Well, uh, sometime last year, I was approached by a client who wanted uh, an e-learning membership site or a subscription-based tutorial platform to be built for pole dance fitness tutorials. And it was actually because of this niche that we came across a lot of custom requirements that eventually led to us choosing this hybrid approach. So what my client really wanted were a lot of the usual things uh, to manage subscriptions, restrict content, have tutorials with quizzes attached, uh, and obviously be usable on different devices, be easy for the team to upload tutorials and easy for the students to consume them. What was interesting though was they wanted this custom design that would support a um, different kind of learning experience. So the way that pole dancing is taught, basically there's not necessarily a linear progression. It's not your academic module one, lesson one, and so forth. It's a collection of skills that are linked together in, in different ways, and we want the students to be able to kind of navigate through that with their own flexible learning path. Whoops. So immediately I recognized this meant we would need custom post types. We've heard a lot about custom post types this weekend. So I'd need custom fields and I'd need relationships between these CPTs. Um, we'd also need advanced search and filter functionality and also good indexing on all of our tutorials and the related data so that that search and filter happened quickly. Then to support the personalization aspect, uh, we needed to be able to save data about the members' activity. So what tutorials they watched, maybe how many times, have they done the quiz, did they pass it? And from that, we can build custom queries to make recommendations for what they should watch next. And last but not least, we wanted the UI to be smooth and sleek for the user. So we want an experience where they can navigate between these related tutorials really naturally and also find new tutorials that they're interested in. So after weighing up all of those things, we decided we wanted to leverage the WordPress backend because it's a really powerful CMS and it's got a lot of great plugins that would suit our needs. And we wanted to build our own front end so that we could have that single page app that is fast and beautiful and easy to use. But we, we, we felt that we didn't have the time or the resources to do the entire solution that way. So we decided we would embed a fully functional React app in WordPress and then try to make the transition as seamless as possible for our users. So as they move from the regular pages to the web app, uh, we wanted that to feel seamless to them. So this hybrid approach really suited the blend of our team skills. Um, I came to the project knowing WordPress but had no experience with React and my lead developer was the opposite. 
We'd also done a similar way smaller project before, something that was more like a proof of concept with uh, embedding React in WordPress. So we knew it was possible and we were ready to take on this more ambitious project. Uh, it was also ideal to do the hybrid approach because it meant that we could limit the headlessness, if I can call it that again, to um, just the core functionality, so our e-learning experience. Then uh, that enabled us to develop things faster, to do a really good job of that UI, and then still have room to grow later. So that flexibility was really important to us. Uh, because we did want to leverage a lot of the other WordPress out-of-the-box solutions for your things like, you know, membership management, payment gateways, contact forms, etc. We also were able to continue using page builders for the other parts of the website that are more simple, home, contact, about. And my client could go straight into the blog section and be familiar with the WordPress interface and, and take care of that themselves. So now we know why, let's talk about how we did this. This was our tech stack. The key things really are just React.js. That was what we used for our UI. And WP GraphQL, which was our data access layer. We also then wrote a couple of custom integrations so that WP GraphQL could talk to the other plugins that we chose. And in our case, this was RCP for the membership management, Facet WP for the search and filter and indexing, and Metabox IO, which was our uh, CPT manager of choice. I don't want to talk too much about why we chose React, because you could do this in any JavaScript framework of your choice or vanilla JS. I will say, though, that we found it a pleasure to code in React, and I kind of fell in love with JSX just quietly. And um, we also really loved that we could use Material UI, which is an implementation of Google's material design that's made for React. And that meant we could use like really cool buttons, sliders, grids, poppers, uh, and have an attractive UI up and running really quickly. I do want to spend a bit of time on why we chose GraphQL, because this was really the game changer for our project. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with, with GraphQL, it's, it's essentially um, a more modern alternative to REST, uh, and it's uh, significantly better from a performance aspect. It's also really simple to write and execute complex queries with flexible user inputs, and it's, uh, it supports nested queries and related data really nicely. And as you may remember from the requirements, all these things were important for us. So this was made possible by a plugin called WP GraphQL. Um, and if you are interested in the REST versus GraphQL discussion, I would check out Jason Barl's Twitter page because there's this interesting uh, thread there where actually one of our other speakers gets a shout out, which I thought was cool. <laughs> All right, so now we have the plan and we have the pieces. The path was not without obstacles, so let's talk about those. First and foremost, we found there were limited resources on doing what we wanted to do. This is mid uh, to late 2018, and there's a lot of tutorials about going headless, but not really about this hybrid idea, and definitely not doing it seamlessly. So the solution was basically trial and error, and a lot of problem solving. In the end, our solution was um, that we made templates, a single and an archive PHP, with empty DOM container that the app gets loaded into. We configured WordPress to route to these templates whenever our slug matched uh, the certain types of CPTs. You can see a tutorial, for example, there. And we would enqueue our scripts on that slug and dequeue any other scripts that we didn't need. Um, we also struggled a little bit with uh, the limited dev experience that we had in WordPress coming into the project because both my partner and I, I suppose, were trying to run before we could walk almost. So we were experienced with programming, but we weren't that familiar with the WordPress ecosystem. And we found a lot of support for amateur level um, WordPress problems. And uh, in the end, what we realized was we weren't asking questions the way that a WordPress developer would. And that's why we were sort of struggling to, to get through that barrier. Eventually, we found a couple of good Slack channels where we got some excellent support from the community. So thank you to Jason Ball and the WP GraphQL team, because they showed us the light a lot of times. Um, we also 
sort of struggled a few times with other plugins that we wanted to interact with because they only had PHP or REST APIs. Um, the solution there was that we wrote our own integration functions and resolvers so that our, we could access their functionality from inside our JavaScript. And the maturity of some of our dependencies was an issue as well because uh, I'm thinking Material and Metabox and WP GraphQL all had features that we really needed now about three, six, nine months down their release plan. So it was just the timing thing for us. And what we did there was work with those plugin developers to either provide use cases so that they could you know, build in some of the stuff that we needed and understand what we needed it for, or um, we raised pull requests and, and sort of closed that gap. So at the end of the day, we did it. We, we embedded a fully functional React app in an otherwise completely standard WordPress installation, and it was beautiful. Uh, now we're doing some refactoring. So we do need to consolidate our data access, our component tree. We've got about three different design patterns from trying to put this together over such a short amount of time. We, we did have a, a small team, just us two, working after hours. We had full-time jobs, and we had a very, very hard deadline for launch. So we also need to now upgrade some of those dependencies that have kind of caught up, if you want to call it that, to sort of our needs. And after that, we would love to translate more of the project into the app scope, which I think will be really exciting now that WP GraphQL is part of Gatsby. Um, we're interested in looking at how we can use that for the other parts of the site that aren't the e-learning component. And maybe after that, we could look at translating some of our React our JS to React Native and possibly offer a companion phone app or something like that. We also want to continue our open source contributions and we intend to publish a blog or two about how we did what we did. So if you are interested in more detail or code snippets or any of that sort of thing, uh, please get in touch with me. My details will be on the last slide. So now we know the how, the why, and then what's next. I just want to finish up by sharing what I really loved about it and why I think maybe you would like to try it too. So it was great for us because we got the best of both worlds. We got to design our front end in the MVC design pattern, so your model view controller, which was um, discussed yesterday. And we still got to use page builders for everything else outside of that component and even for rapid iteration of mockups for things that we were going to build in our custom UI. We found front-end development relatively hassle-free, which compared to my previous experience developing for WordPress was kind of a breath of fresh air. Um, I don't know about everybody in this room, but I generally find it's a mix of convoluted PHP templates, uh, CSS overrides that can get very messy, jQuery version conflicts, or all that sort of fun stuff. So it was really nice to be able to develop something for WordPress in a clean and more modern way. Um, I also actually found, as someone new to React, that the React learning curve was, was shallower than I expected. Uh, case in point, about six months after launch, my client presented me with new mockups. So we're going to get a nice new facelift on the site. And I managed to reskin the whole um, app in far less time than it took me to do the rest of the WordPress site. And that was a lot to do with Material and their excellent theme engine. But it wasn't just style that we were editing. There's a lot of layout changes, too. So the modular component thing and the convenience of JSX, all that just made sense to me. And it made for a faster development time, and I loved it. I also loved WP GraphQL. That was a very, very clean and user-friendly way to query our data. And it was especially convenient with this graphical IDE, which I called GraphEQL for my entire time up until I realized <laughs> graphical is a much, much better way to pronounce that. Um, it makes so much sense. It's like a graphical version. Um, so this is, this is a really handy little thing you can stick in your WP admin. And you can run your queries, see the results like this, and you can actually explore your objects. So you can go through and see the fields and what they're implementing and stuff like that, which is very handy. And ultimately, we loved it because the client loved it. They were impressed and happy. The end result was fast and smooth and intuitive and looked great and came in on time and on budget. So I don't know what else you could want. <laughs> 
Um, why you might like it though. So I talked about why it fit all of our requirements and perhaps that's not something that you sort of have the same needs for, but I still think the hybrid approach is worth considering. If you're a business owner, it means that you can update your website, bring in advanced functionality, custom designs, improve performance without doing the whole website as an app. So if you've been interested in this idea of this single page app, sort of headless WordPress, you don't have to do it all or nothing. You can go hybrid and you can do it bits and pieces. Same applies for a designer and a developer. You can tackle upgrades incrementally, you can upskill yourself progressively, take something like the image gallery or the blog section and make your single page app for that, load your JS on that page and you're cooking. Uh, also, if your goal is to go headless, I feel like this can be a good stepping stone and it can put you on the path to perhaps developing software solutions that are um, a WordPress backend and a phone app front end. If you are an agency owner or in a mixed mode team, I think it's really cool because you can have each player working in the ecosystems that they are already familiar with and yet still be solving problems with modern tools and modern methods. Uh, and if I can sum it up in a nutshell, it's just about giving yourself more options. Uh, there's been a lot of talk this weekend about, you know, it's a new time for WordPress and, and all this sort of thing. And I, I truly believe that. I think that everyone can benefit from modernizing their WordPress sites um, without, while still keeping their existing sites running. And I think it's great to explore alternatives to these big overhauls that might run over time or over budget or just never happen. So. Yeah, I think that you should consider a hybrid approach for your next project. It might be a quicker or cheaper or more agile alternative. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Thanks, Georgia. That was a great talk. Um, Thank you. I can't wait to see what you've built for your clients uh, sort of productized and made available because uh, it's a sort of thing that sort of uh, I think could be really successful. So good on you. Um, my question was around, you sort of touched on briefly about how you uh, had your bit of time when it came to, you know, you needed features that weren't yet available. Uh, and you touched briefly on what you did to go about getting those features, but I was hoping you could expand a little bit more on that. Um, from my perspective, is it at the other end, um, is as a plugin developer, uh, trying to meet those requirements from the users. Yeah. And, and I'd like to hear what worked. Well, uh, I'll use WP GraphQL as the example because uh, essentially what we found there was Jason, the plugin developer, was really interested in the way that we wanted to use the, his GraphQL. They were using it for, I think, news distribution and like syndicated blogging and this kind of thing. So our use case with this whole tutorials that are related to each other and quizzes and, and user data that we're saving just wasn't something that was a use case that he had built GraphQL, WP GraphQL to do. So he was, I think we were just very, very lucky. He was already interested in introducing a lot of these things. It just was a matter of, we did a little bit of the grunt work with some use cases and, and my lead developer did do a lot of the coding anyway and raise PRs. And yeah, I think that we were very fortunate. I do know that in other cases, a plugin developer can't cater for all these expanding needs, but that's how we handled it. Cool, I, I, I would just then say that I'd echo that is it's a really good idea, even if you don't have the technical ability to raise a PR, that what your tip there on just telling the developer the use case is super helpful. Mm, definitely. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, and on your comment that you'd like to see how it's productized, I did regret that I didn't put more screenshots in and show some more about uh, what the solution we built. And it is obviously highly niched for the pole fitness thing, but I do think it's a, uh, a structure that, that can be applied more widely. So if anybody is interested in something similar, I would really like to talk to you. Thank you. 
Cool. Thanks very much.